In this video, we'll see how to digitalize our hand sketch and make it go from this to this. For this, we can use any document scanner app on our mobile and Photoshop for the rendering. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. I'm using Adobe Scan on my mobile to scan a base sketch of a villa that I've made. Once you take a picture, you'll have options to export it as a PDF or as an image. Let's export it to our computer and take it forward from there. So let's begin by creating a new Photoshop document. Once the new document is there, all we have to do is drag and drop the scanned PDF image onto the Photoshop file. We can then resize the image just a little bit and we can then right click on the layer and rasterize it. We can then clean up the scanned image just in case there are any scratch marks or pen smudges that we have on the document. I like to name my layers so I'm going to rename this as base. We will also need a solid background color behind the base image that we are going to render. So let's roughly select the outlines of the villa using the polygonal lasso tool and add a solid grey color behind it in a new layer. We will have to change the blend mode of this layer to multiply so that we can see through the image. So we have set up the document and it's ready to start rendering. So we will begin by choosing texture images for each face of the villa elevation and we will try to import that into the image. We can start off with a wooden texture. So I am going to look up wooden textures on Pinterest and I prefer Pinterest over Google because this gives precise results when looking for textures. So here's a wooden texture that I like. I can simply right click on it and copy the image and inside the Photoshop file I can just press Ctrl V to drop the image. Let's rotate the image and extend the texture so that it looks horizontal and fills up the entire space above the balcony. Let's reduce the opacity a little bit so that we can see through the image. We'll have to right click and choose Distort. Once the Distort tool is activated, we'll have to drag the corners of the image and fill up the region where we're trying to put the image. You can do this easily by following the perspective that already exists in this image. Once I've distorted the image, I'll just make a selection of region where I don't want this texture and I'll simply delete them. And this layer has to be in the multiply mode so that it goes through the image. As you can see, the color of the wooden texture changes because of the grey color that we have on the layer below. So let's select that and change the color to white. The wooden textures are done. So maybe for this part of the elevation, I would like some kind of a vertical lowered panels. So let's go to Pinterest and look for vertical grey panels. I like the texture of this, although it looks a little bit brown. We can adjust the color of that in Photoshop. So let's right click and copy the image and import it into Photoshop. So to adjust the colors, we can go to image, adjustment and hue saturation. So let's reduce the saturation and this turns out to be a grey color. Now just like the previous step, let's reduce the opacity, distort it to fill the face of the elevation and delete the areas that we don't want. The blend mode has to be in multiply once again. This is the same step that will follow for all the textures that we are going to add on the elevation. Now I've chosen a stone texture cladding and I'm going to follow the same steps once again. Let's distort it so that it follows the perspective and also change the blend mode to multiply. The next thing is to work on the glass texture on the windows on the first floor. So what we'll have to do is let's create a new layer and rename it as glass. Let's select the space where we intend to add glass texture and simply change the blend mode of the layer to multiply. Now with the grey color selected, we can simply use the gradient tool to drop shadows on the top and bottom surfaces of the selection. This is a simple way to create the effect of light falling on glass. Now let's select a soft round brush and choose one shade darker and draw along the edges of each panel. This gives a distinct appearance to each of the panels. Once that is done, let's go back and choose a hard round texture. Now this time, let's choose a white color and just draw white diagonal lines on the face of the glass. We'll then have to create a new layer and rename it as the glass frame. This again has to be in a multiplier layer. We can choose a darker shade of grey and draw along the frames of the glass. Since the grey looks a little bit too flat, we can make a selection and go one shade lighter and draw along the edges so that it gives a three dimensional effect. The rest of the textures on the image can be filled up. Let's start with the road texture that comes outside the pavement of the villa. Just like the previous steps, we'll have to change the blend mode to multiply, distort the image and try to match the angle with the perspective that is there on the image. We can add a pavement texture along the driveway of the villa 
I've chosen another concrete texture for the pavement in front of the villa. Since this texture has vertical lines on it, it has to clearly match with the perspective lines or else it might look out of context. So just like before, let's distort it, change the opacity and try to match the vertical lines with the angle of perspective. So once it's there, we also need the same texture on the vertical face of the pavement. Let's make a small selection and press Alt and Drag to create a copy of the same texture. This selection has to be in vertical lines, so let's adjust it using the Distort tool. We've added a number of textures here, so let's select the layers of all the textures and put them in a group so that we don't get confused. For the rest of the elevation, we can simply add grey colors on different layers for each face of the elevation. Let's add a patch of grass on front of the villa. So let's make a selection and add a green color to it. I'm using grey colors once again to highlight parts of the car like the glass and the wheels. The next step would be to add shadows to the elevation. Let's start by creating a new layer and renaming it as shadows. The blend mode of this layer needs to be in multiply. These overhanging parts of the villa will cast shadows below. So let's make a rough selection and use paint bucket to drop solid grey color into it. All the colors and texture needs to blend in seamlessly. So let's adjust the exposure of each of the texture so that it falls in place. Let's copy a grass texture and place it over the green layer that we did earlier. Once the building texture is done, we can create a background by creating a new layer and adding a solid color to it. For now let's add a blue color to it and drag it behind the base image. We see that the base image has a white background already so we'll have to click that and delete it. The next step would be to add trees and vegetation for which we will once again go to Pinterest and look for hand drawn trees. You will find tons of images on Pinterest and all you have to do is copy one of that and simply drop it onto your photoshop file. You can clear out the background and resize it so that it fits into the elevation. I've chosen another set of tall trees to fill up the space on the left side of the elevation. The same way I've chosen a bunch of bushes that stand along the edges of the driveway. Another tree on the right side to fill up the space. And I've also looked for a branch of the tree that forms the foreground of the image. The next step would be to add human figures for which I'm going to use my Gumroad product. It's called 50 hand drawn human figures and you can find it in the link in description. The next step would be to work on smaller elements such as trees, birds etc. Let's start by using the ellipse tool to form the sun and another ellipse with dotted lines. We can simply find bird silhouette on google and we'll have to just copy paste it into our document. Another step that I like to do is, since the textures on the edges are too sharp, I create a new layer and simply use a white brush to draw around and ease out the edges. Small lighting effects on the villa would look good for which we'll have to create a new layer and change the blend mode to overlay. Now let's zoom in and all we have to do is make a conical selection from the tip of the light fixture. Let's select a very light shade of orange and using the gradient tool we'll have to drop a color from the top of the fixture. This gives the appearance of light coming from the fixture. Let's use a soft brush to ease out the edges. We can simply copy the texture and place it wherever we want the light texture. The next part would be to add highlights so that the textures do not look too flat. For this we'll have to go to the selection of the grey color and choose a shade of grey that is one shade lighter. We'll simply have to brush over the selection and make lines. We can also use a solid black color to create more emphasis on the edges of the elevation. Here I'm adding more shadows to create a depth in the image. Let's also erase some part of the background and the image must be done. We hope this technique was helpful to you and if it was, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more such content and I'll see you on the next one.